Hi guys, Olive here, here today to talk about tea, different flavors of tea, but also, of course, to talk about books and which flavors of tea I think best match some of my favorite books. I was actually inspired to make this video after listening to a podcast episode. I am a really big fan of the WNBA, in case you don't know that about me. It's playoff season right now and I am living my best life, but I listen to a lot of WNBA podcasts and there's one called WNBA Nation and there was one specific episode recently in which two of the hosts compared all of the WNBA teams this season to different ice cream flavors. And the way that they rationalized those decisions, I thought was equal parts fascinating and hilarious. And it immediately made me want to do something similar here on my channel. I wanted to compare my favorite books to ice cream flavors. But then I had the realization that I'm currently really watching what I eat. I'm carb cycling and generally Generally, I'm not eating anything unhealthy. So I figured thinking about ice cream and talking about ice cream might be rather mean to do to myself. <laughs> but something I haven't cut out of my diet is tea. And since tea and books go so well together, and it's something I can talk about without feeling too sad about my current eating habits, I figured I could talk about my favorite books and compare them to tea flavors. And then I remembered that Amy over at Amy's Dusty Bookshelf, I will link her channel for you in the description box below, many years ago, she made a tag with a lot of tea themed questions that are actually perfect for what I'm looking to do in this video. So I'm going to answer her questions. I've got my tea. I'm thinking about my favorite books. I'm ready to go. So the first tea is a double bergamot Earl Grey. And the challenge here is to match this with a robust, deep, intellectual, flavorful book. And for this one, I've got to go with The Unbearable Lightness of Being by Milan Kundera. This is a classic Czech novel that is very much a novel of ideas, and it contains a lot of the author's philosophies on life. I mean, sure, this book also has to do with communism in Central and Eastern Europe, but all of the characters inside this novel represent different ideas, and the author spends a lot of his time philosophizing, which I really realize doesn't sound all that appealing, but there's something just so absorbing about this book, the way it invites you into these conversations about life and about freedom. I think about this book all the time, and every single time it starts to get bitterly cold outside, I start to crave this book. I feel pulled into it again. I want to pick it up once again. I can't believe I don't have my own copy of this. I realize that I need to go out and get my own copy of it because I feel like I'm going to want to reread it again this winter. There's just something about when it gets cold outside, I want this book in the same way that I want a rich, robust cup of tea, like a double bergamot Earl Grey in the wintertime. So I think these two make a perfect match. The next tea is Tim Hortons Steeped. Amy is Canadian, in case that wasn't already apparent. This is one I had to go and look up because I'm an American. I've never had this before. But it seems to be just kind of your everyday black tea, maybe the Lipton equivalent, if we're talking in American terms. So the book to match with this one is a book you can read on the go, one that you come back to time and time again. So basically a trusty, tried and true, uncomplicated book. That's what I got from this prompt. And based Based on that interpretation of the prompt, I decided to choose Bridget Jones's Diary by Helen Fielding, the little 90s Pride and Prejudice retelling that could. I love this book so much. I've read it several times now, and I always seem to want to read this one during the Christmas season. So apparently this is another cold weather read for me. Is this book the best quality book in the entire world? Absolutely not, which I think makes it the perfect pair for this basic black tea, because the black tea isn't ever going to be the highest quality tea you've ever had, but it gets the job done. And there's a lot of comfort in the familiarity. And that's how I feel about Bridget Jones's diary. I love reading these entries because they start off with so much promise. In some of her entries, she's so excited because she's really determined to stop smoking, to lose weight, to cut back on drinking, to find herself a boy friend. She wants to do all of these things, but things keep going wrong for her. 
So actually, in the majority of the entries in this book, she's just mortified by her own behavior, by the behavior of her friends, family members, love interests, things keep going wrong at her job. This book is full of just so much delightful chaos. And I guess since I read it during the Christmas season, which is always busy for all of us, it makes my life feel downright tranquil in comparison, which is always very nice. And this book is also just really funny. I know that every time I pick this up, it's going to put me in a good mood. The next tea is Meyer Lemon. And Amy asks that we pair this one with a tangy, fast paced read, something that's gone before we have fully savored the flavor. And I would also add that a Meyer Lemon tea would be gone extremely quickly around me because I love lemons if you couldn't tell by my shirt today. So I think I would chug some Meyer lemon tea, like regardless of the temperature. For this one, I have to pick a favorite book of mine that I positively inhaled the first time I read it. And that's Uprooted by Naomi Novik. And this cover is even yellow like a lemon, which I think is totally perfect. This book is a fantasy book, and it's about this grumpy wizard and the young woman with a very special magical gift who he reluctantly takes as his apprentice and their ongoing battle against this encroaching magical forest. I am not even that big of a reader of fantasy, but this one captivated me basically immediately. And then I just could not read this fast enough. I wanted to get this into my brain as quickly as possible. But then, of course, the moment I was done, I was so sad that it was over. And ever since I finished it, I've wanted to be able to experience that high of reading this book for the first time all over again. And there's just no recapturing it, unfortunately. This book was definitely over too soon. The next flavor of tea is chamomile lavender. And this one, of course, calls for a relaxing, calming, late night read. And for this one, I chose another book that had a moment of being a booktube darling, kind of like Uprooted did, but I picked The Unseen World by Liz Moore. This is a mystery book about the daughter of a brilliant computer scientist who discovers after her father, the computer scientist, starts experiencing early onset dementia, that he isn't who he claimed to be during her entire upbringing. And she wants to figure out the truth about his life when he can no longer tell her. I know that synopsis and probably also this cover leads you to believe that this is a thriller, but it's actually not. It's a very cozy book. It's very relaxed in its pace. It's the kind of book you can imagine reading in front of the fireplace or sneaking in a few pages right before bed. The next tea is Lady Grey, which I've actually never had before. I know it's a variation on Earl Grey, which makes me want to try it because I love Earl Grey tea. But for Lady Grey tea, I'm supposed to pick a smooth, subtle, classic book perfect for a serene winter morning. And so because of that, I picked 84 Charing Cross Road by Helene Hampf. I consider this book to be a classic. It's a collection of letters between the author and people connected to this little used bookshop in London, and the letters span 20 years. So you get to see friendships develop in here, and there's also joy, there's loss. It's a little bit of everything. It is just a delight. It'll make you laugh, it'll make you cry. It's perfect for a winter morning. Next, there's Orange Pico, and apparently the book equivalent is a popular book that everyone has read. And what could I pick for this one besides Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, the classic of all classics, the story of Elizabeth Bennet and Mr. Darcy, and without a doubt, Jane Austen's strongest book. Now, I know we all have our opinions on which Jane Austen novel is our favorite, and I love Mansfield Park, something ferocious, but I think it's hard to argue that any of her other novels trump this one. I think this is her at the height of her powers. Every scene is captivating. Every character is wonderful even when they're being awful. I'm actually really glad that the Jane Austen novel that most people read 
is also her strongest. But the next tea is English breakfast. And this one, of course, calls for a British classic. And since I've already spoken about Jane Austen, I won't pick another one of her novels. Instead, I'll pick another one of my favorite classics, which is Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell. This is the story of young Molly Gibson. Her father is a doctor. He's also a widower. And he wants to give his daughter Molly a mother figure and some family structure since her mother died died when she was very young. So he marries a widow who has a daughter of her own who's about Molly's age. And this is basically the story of their blended family, the bonds that they form, but also the complications when it comes to the love lives of these young women. This book is a delight. I love it with all my heart. I also love North and South, but I think I love this one a little bit more. Even talking about it makes me want to reread it. I'm going to skip the Canadian breakfast tea because I don't have a favorite book that nicely fits that prompt. So instead, I'm going to move on to the next tea, which is green tea. And of course, the type of book you're supposed to pick for this one is a healthy book, one that feeds your mind. I've got to go back to nonfiction for this one. And since green tea makes me think about health, makes me think about the human body, I'm going to go with I Contain Multitudes by Ed Yong. This is a book about microbes, the tiny little organisms that live on and inside of our bodies that do so much for us completely without our knowledge. They're actually so important to us that it's likely that we evolved alongside them rather than the other way around. I geeked out so hard when I read this book for the first time. It's definitely one of those nonfiction books that makes me want to go up to every single person in my life and say, did you know, followed by one of the unbelievably cool facts I learned in this book. It was good for me in that I learned a lot. And it was also good for me because I was just so excited while I was reading it. I actually reviewed this book here on my channel right after I read it for the first time. I'll link that for you in the description box below and up in the cards. But then finally, there there's iced tea, which is a sweet summer treat brewed for the brief, lazy days of summer. And the book equivalent of iced tea for me, because I read this book every single June, is my all-time favorite novel. Rules of Civility by Amor Tolls. I read this book for the first time during the summer. And so even though the vast majority of this book takes place over a calendar year, I really associate it with the summertime, which is why I've chosen to read it during the summer every single year. And also, I feel like it just fits the summer rather nicely because it's not a fast paced, thrilling book. It's much more contemplative and leisurely as Katie Content thinks back to her life in 1938, thinks about all the people that were a part of her life during 1938 and how much her life changed, how much that year went on to affect every subsequent year of her life. This book is such a nice treat for me during the summertime. It's the way I start every single summer. And so I thought this was a good choice for the iced tea prompt. So those were all the tea flavors that Amy provided to match up books with. I thought they were all fantastic. If you can think of any additional tea flavors, like if you have a favorite kind of tea and you can think of a perfect prompt of what kind of a book you would match up with that tea flavor, please let me know in the comment section below. I would love to do another one of these, especially as the weather gets cooler. Any additional comments or questions you may have about anything you've seen in this video or about anything in general can go in that comment section as well. All the books that I mentioned in today's video will be linked in the description box below for your clicking convenience. And at the bottom of that exact same description box, you'll see links to everywhere you can find me around the internet, like Goodreads and Instagram, the two places where I'm the most active in case you would like to keep up with what I am reading and writing about right now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.